Hi, hi, hi. As always, as we trickle in, can you hear me? Some of you were already making fun of me <laughs> for asking that every time, but you know, you got to be sure. I had to clean my glasses. So I want to start on time. So <laughs> let me know <laughs> what you can or can't hear. And that's my alert that I did not mute. So you can definitely blop, blop. There we go. How is everybody on this? It's Saturday, Saturday evening. <laughs> how are we? How are we all doing? <laughs> I wasn't sure if I was going to stream today or not. I ended up just deciding why not. And so I tossed up a community post of maybe some questions we could chit chat about. I was waiting for a comic to show up that I was going to stream about, but it showed up today around midday. And I was like, oh, I haven't had time to reread it or anything. So we will wait. We will wait. <laughs> and it is, I, ha I have it here with me though. It's hold it up so you can see it. It's low. It's the low compendium and my Claire's bookmark. Because <laughs> you know I never have a proper bookmark. So now it's just the earrings from Claire's that are going to be marking the spot. But it, uh, I'm excited. I would flip through it for you. I'll, but I'll have to curate the flipping. Otherwise, it's going to flip to an inappropriate page and <laughs> we're going to get demonetized like my last stream with Amanda and <laughs> the Green Lantern and Green Arrow one. It's a good thing that I grabbed this before my um, my girls did because, oh my goodness, they would have seen some things. <laughs> that would have been inappropriate. Let me see if I can find just a nice representative page where nothing is going on. <laughs> Lane Kramer, thank you very much. So thoughts, Batman and Robin number seven, flat lie. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't caught up, but you know that I will risk doing an update on flat lie. <laughs> Every time I'm invested in flat line, I'm invested in punchline, all the lines. But you know, first I got to reread this lovely tome and then decide if I'm going to do a, a full review of it. I feel like I might. <laughs> It's something that I want to talk about. I'm very much in a deep sci-fi mood and well at the moment. And sometimes it can be hard to find cool wrecks that don't just repeat the same things. I'm not sure if you found that when you're looking for like, I want to read, I don't know, horror or sci-fi. And it's just the same list over and over again. <laughs> Let me see if I can find that page. I was going to find a page. I got this. And of course, the first page I flipped to is the orgy page. Let's not do that. And that one too, why am I like this? Come on, just a nice, cool, invite. let's go for this nice opening environmental shot of the suit. Let's go here, let's just go here where it's safe. Ooh, look at the suit, look at it, look how nice it is. This is a Rick Remender and Greg Tuccini and it is 26 issues and it's complete, it's finished. <laughs> so you don't need to worry about that. Oh, this page is cool as well. There we go. Let's see if I can get it up for you. Kinda. There's a bit of reflective glare, but, and it's hard. I haven't fully opened it yet, as you can see. So there's some really great ocean shots and I'm trying to find one for you. Ooh, that's a pretty cool, but that's just a nice environmental shot over here. That's just nice to look at. <laughs> Matthew Prower, thank you very much. Not much on the mind right now, but can I link stuff here? No, <laughs> if you need to link something, email it because um, YouTube auto holds links unless you tell it not to. And I have not told it to turn that off because one of the things it catches sometimes, not all the time, but is spam and uh, it's still only a few minutes in, so prawn. <laughs> and, and it's because if you have those links, it's the YouTuber who gets put on the hook for it, not the person who posted it. So that's why you'll find that links are auto held a lot of the time. When I have the time, I'll try and go through the held folder. And if I see them and click on them and they're fine, approve them. But I don't always have time to do that. <laughs> oh, Rain coming in early with a hot take. I don't like Damien and Flatline's relationship. <laughs> Is that a hot take? You're not the first person that I've seen say that. 
<laughs> you're not the you're not the first person. Why? Your brain, tell us why. What is your reasoning for why you're not into it? I'm I'm lukewarm on it. I can take and or leave it. <laughs> Benjamin Hall, thank you very much. What non-prominent hero needs therapy? So this non-prominent means just not the A-list, like the B-list, the C-list. I mean, almost anybody, I guess, featured in Heroes in Crisis. <laughs> Lots of people. You can uh, take your pick. A lot of stuff has happened to our heroes that they may want to talk about. <laughs> Adam Frey, thank you very much. I gotta say, the sinister 90s Venom eyes on the screen are setting a wicked mood in my YouTube window. <laughs> I never get a chance to wear the uh, Venom crop top hoodie that I got. And tonight, it's, I feel like, slightly cold. I keep it warm in here, but it's slightly cold enough that I could wear the crop top hoodie that my husband always makes fun of me for because he's saying, what's the point of it being a hoodie if it's a crop top? <laughs> It's a valid question, but I like it. It's fashionable. It is the moment, and I wouldn't wear it outside <laughs> unless it was warm. White Raven, thank you very much. A postmortem on New Warriors 2020 and be negative. <laughs> oh, what a time. What a time that was. I think I saw, uh, was it Penguin Z like, uh, or Charlie do something on it? I'm not sure if I saw that pop up or if that was just an old clip or if it made the rounds again or not. If it did pop up again, why are we popping it up again? I mean, not that it's not amusing when it happens. But let me see if I can find, and actually, let me let me tell you what this is about. I'm just holding it up and pulling random pages at it for you. So, wow, the grammar. This is set in the distant future where the sun's expansion has become a more pressing concern. And so humanity retreated under the ocean and they've created these ocean cities and their society has evolved some and they're like, they're fish people. There's all kinds of things going on. And they sent out probes into space to try and find habitable planets, but nothing has come back as of yet. And so their society has kind of evolved into this hopeless society because they know that it's just inevitable that the sun is coming to consume them all and it's the story of a response coming back from one of the probes and this family trying to fight to actually be able to do something about this response and this society with all the apathy and the political corruption and then also some other survivors that they weren't aware of who are not interested in letting them succeed so it's a very interesting and existential but also hopeful work and it's, it's beautiful. It's just got beautiful art in it. So if that sounds up your alley, is she naked in this too? Not enough that it's a problem. But oh my gosh, sorry about that. Your poor ears. But I like that shot too. It's a really cool shot. I'm always just knocking into things, being awkward. I'm getting used to the mic being where it is. <laughs> Let me see. Razor Vine, thank you very much. Always love more Riddler lore videos. Glad to catch you on a stream for once. They, I saw a lot of people saying that they were catching this one, which is great. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be more on time <laughs> and more regular with these things. It's been fun. Rain, thank you very much. Oh, and with elaboration, I get Damien is like Bruce with multiple love interests. They are just like Bat Cat, and I wish Damien would have someone who isn't as toxic. <laughs> So you want to break the dynamic. You want to have something different. We don't need to repeat exactly what's already going on with his father. No, that's fair. Just something something more unique. Maybe even a flip or a subversion could be fun. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. For sure. Matthew, thank you very much. All right, I emailed you some fan art a while back, if you don't mind. Oh, I appreciate that. I love fan art. Thank you very much. I will check that out later. Kevin Keen, thank you very much. Really enjoy your videos on Silver Age DC comic books, especially Mort Weisinger edited comics. So bad, they're good. Hey, sometimes so good, they're good. They're not all bad. They're not all. No, there's some gems in there and there are some kernels and some good stuff. And I will forever enjoy the battle of Mort and the letter writers or the fake letters that he wrote himself sometimes. That's always a good time. <laughs> it really is. MP, thank you very much. I feel there is an incredible lack of media literacy within comic fandom, especially online. Do you feel this is the case? 
This is a really good question. That's a really solid question. And I'm going to say that I feel that there is a lack of media literacy in general, just in terms of online consumption and not looking into where things are coming from and taking the extra step as to where this come from, why is it being produced, is it accurate, is it real? And that problem is only accelerating with the proliferation of all of the AI material that people are producing. And you're seeing a lot of a lot more <laughs> fake things popping up. But I would say it is a problem when people don't go check some things or sometimes information just isn't as readily available or people don't know how to look for it. It's just, there's a lot of things. There's a, there's a lot of things and it's very easy to just take what's presented and run with that. I was thinking about that actually recently with the whole um, curse panel video I did where it was Batman holding the gun and a lot of people came in well he used guns in the 40s but if you look that up which i have is actually read that era it's not that often in the original span it's about three four times and then there are a couple of blips after only a few a handful you can count them on your hands and then there are throwbacks when people refer to that era but it's just something that's been able to proliferate because you see it all the time on lists and the like. And it's just, it's fascinating. But I would say media literacy just in general is something that maybe there needs to be a course or just something. <laughs> Same with online etiquette, in my opinion. Cardcaptor17, thank you very much. Do you like Sinister Sons? I do. I like Lord Zod stuff. I like him in Young Justice. It explores the Zods. We get to see another view of Krypton. So far, it's fun. So far, it's been fun. I don't think it's as fun as the Super Sons, which it feels like that's the vibe that they're going for. But it's, on the whole, it's a good time. I'm just thinking about Green Lantern now. <laughs> I fell into the, the Green Lantern pit. Ozzy Dragoon, thank you very much. My favorite thing about New York Warriors 2020 is the made a decision so bad an entire event got axed. One that had two page spread in history of the Marvel Universe. <laughs> it was a time. It was a moment. It was definitely a moment. <laughs> Jaraz, thank you very much. Reading recommendation. Beautiful stories for ugly children. So that's something that they're putting out there. And also for me. <laughs> I will keep that in mind. You know, I'm always looking for things to read, even if I don't always get a chance to look at them, but it's always good to have more recs and I appreciate it. I hope that some of you check this out and enjoy it so that when I eventually do do a video on it, hopefully we can talk. <laughs> we can talk about it. The other video that was in the pipeline was, it's right here. It's underneath the jewelry and stuff I made lately. It's this one. I always flirt with the idea of talking about this and then something else happens and I don't end up doing it. <laughs> but maybe one day Batman Europa will, will get its day in the sun. I've had this just sitting around literally for years being like, one day, one day we're going to talk about it. It's going to happen. Memento Mortem, thank you very much. A Brainiac breakdown for DC's new event? Would be fun to talk about Brainiac, wouldn't it? We'll see. You know that I am rarely timely. So <laughs> right now I'm in a rabbit hole still of the different bat mites. And someone requested a Larry vid, a Teen Titans Larry vid. And I kind of want to do it because there's more Larry out there than you realize. There's Teen Titans go, Larry. Some of you are like, no, don't do it. <laughs> don't go there. We don't want it. Rain asks, best and worst Batman love interest. Ooh, you have so many choices. You have so many choices for uh, for Batman. I'm going to throw some curveball love interests. I was thinking about Julie Madison earlier today. Just Julie Madison, OG Golden Age Julie Madison, not Redux Julie Madison, because there was that Batman first night and they brought Julie Madison in there. And I just, I like her. I like her confidence. I like to think of what would have happened if they'd thought about that a bit more. Silver St. Cloud is <laughs> someone I also sometimes think about. <laughs> I see people in the comments just like, that girl worst, boo. <laughs> I figured, I figured that would come up. 
you're thinking about the rooftop, aren't you? Close your eyes. Imagine the rooftop. Imagine the hand covering the entire body. <laughs> it haunts me. It really does. I don't know why my camera is flickering, but it is. <laughs> the Apprentice, thank you very much. What's your favorite wig? Uh, my favorite wig is uh, one I don't wear very often. It's a Velma style wig. I always love me a Velma style wig, but it is blonde. It's short and it has uh, red streaks on the side. And I am a big fan of it. I don't even know if I've worn it on camera. Maybe I haven't. I'm not sure. Actually, in the what I posted, I got a question about, about wigs. So I can answer that in a moment. Matthew, thank you very much. Okay, two more things, actually. Any recent any recently animated slash live action things pike your interest? And any familiarity with Pepper Ann? I remember Pepper Ann. I do remember Pepper Ann. Does anything recent pipe my pike peak? <laughs> My interest, I'm not sure. My one ear is off to the side because my daughters are having a sleepover over in the far room and I can hear them. <laughs> the sleep is not happening, but that's all right. That's what Saturday night is for. Now I'm just remembering Pepper Ann and that entire Saturday morning cartoon blog. Oh, common sense. Thank you very much. What is your opinion on the new X-Men announcements? I actually have that pulled up if you're talking about the comics. I have that pulled up to share for those who have not heard, which um, I thought it might be fun to read what's, what's coming and all of those things. So let me just pull up that screen because I have it. A bow. Yes, the future of X-Men reveal. <laughs> so let me see. Oh, Matthew, you're saying I guess I'll never know. I just can't think of anything right now. I got really distracted by a huge crash and it pushed everything else out of my brain. And so this, I can just read while my brain reassembles, <laughs> which says, in the wake of their acclaimed Krakoan age, witness the X-Men's latest evolution, X-Men evolution, this summer in X-Men from the Ashes. So what we've got here is this new era of X-Men will be centered around three flagship titles written and drawn by some of today's most influential and acclaimed creators. We love using the word acclaimed in this. Jed McKay and Ryan Stegman's X-Men, Gail Simone and David Marquez's Uncanny X-Men, and Eve Ewing and Carmen Carnero's Exceptional X-Men. It's always nice when they do an XX, but they should have taken the E off and then we would have really had something going. And so what we have here is X-Men. Krakoa is no more, but the X-Men fight on from their new base in Alaska. The X-Men raise a flag of defiance. Join Cyclops, Beast, Magneto, Psylocke, Kid Omega, Temper, formerly Oya, Magic, and Juggernaut as they as assemble. I wasn't ready. <laughs> Avengers assemble against new forces battling for the destiny and philosophy of the mutant species. Mutant business is their business. That sounds like they're about to open some kind of private detective or like a mercenary firm. What? Oh, oh, it's a quote. Okay. It's not just those three titles in this relaunch. There's a lot, but wait, there's more. McKay shared at the panel, my X-Men title is where we'll see the first inklings of what the X-Men will look like in 2024. I'm very excited for you guys to see it when it comes out. If you look at that lineup, there are a group of people who are not well suited to integrating into the world. And in these books, we'll see what that means and what it looks like going forward. Ooh la la. Sam Cooper, thank you very much. Can we bring back the Legion of Superheroes? So many fun characters, so many possible futuristic themes. I think it could be fun. The Legion is a harder sell for people who aren't as familiar with them. And I don't think the recent revival with uh, Brian Michael Bendis helped that too, too much. It was a bit difficult to get into if you weren't familiar with them and I don't think it's showcased them to their strengths personally just having read them through various eras but that's just my opinion what did you think I personally would like to see them come back they've always been up my alley they're not my favorite but they can be really fun and they give you a lot of room to maneuver because you can 
be a bit looser with some of your canon because you're so far in the future. It's also a good place to maybe create some new characters and the like. You can have a bit of freedom there. So let's do the next one, which is <laughs> uncanny. That's just so big up there. Uncanny X-Men. Outlaw heroes once again. The X-Men embark on a new mission, making themselves at home in the Big Easy. The X-Men protect a world that hates and fears them. Join Rogue, Gambit, Nightcrawler, Jubilee, and Wolverine on explosive superhero adventures, uncanny as ever. The X-Men are back to saving the day. Mutant style. <laughs> Gangnam style. I think X fans are special and that we identify with having something different about us. And you're going to feel that in this book and what it means to have that thing about you that's different or exceptional. Oh, wait, that's the next title. We go deep into the emotional part of that, Simone told the crowd. David Marquez is the perfect artist for this book, she continued. He does amazing action, amazing character work, and he's really excited. I want to hear him say that about getting into the characters appearing in this book. I know from the very from the very first panel that this book was going to be super I knew, sorry, was going to be super exciting and gorgeous. He just knows how to knock it out of the park. So get hype. <laughs> Translation, get hype. I appreciate that they are trying to build hype. Balls Monkey, thank you very much. What's your opinion on Colossus? Do you think more can be done with him or is he past his prime? I think if you get the right creator with a character, you can make them just rock and have a great story with them i don't think that a character is necessarily going to be past their prime if you can get somebody who really can think of something to do with them also i'm just thinking about colossus's accent from 90s x-men because i'm deep in the uh 90s x-men <laughs> rewatch right now just for fun Oh, exceptional X-Men is, is the longest. Let's go. Dramatic rating. Exceptional X-Men. Mutant kind's two greatest teachers mold the next generation of X-Men. Kate Pride, not Kitty, has returned home to Chicago following the war with Orcus. Having stepped away from the world of mutantdom, she is nevertheless called back into action. Just when she thought she was out, they pulled her back in. As she crosses paths with a trio of new young mutants, Bronze, Axo, and Melee, who clearly need training and guidance. Unfortunately for Kate, Emma Frost thinks so as well. Longtime fans of Kitty Pride, um, Kate Pride, can count on the kinds of adventures you expect from her as a classic favorite. While I hope new and old readers alike will get to love this all new team of young mutants, doing shared. Kitty, the one-time kid's sister figure of the X-Men has to reckon with her own memories, good and bad, of being a child of Xavier. Now I'm thinking, remember that Xavier panel? <laughs> Xavier's a jerk. As she navigates a role as leader and mentor for a new generation of mutants who are trying to make their way in a time of crisis. Now, why? The, this quote is so... Okay, we're just, let's go. I always try to strike a chord between appealing to veteran comic fans and new readers, but since so many people fell in love with the X-Men as teens and this book is about a team of young folk folks that feels especially important to me here she continued i hope that for some 13 or 14 year old readers this might be the first comic they pick up working on this series has been a ton of fun already as carmen carnero's art is bringing so much dynamism ooh, nice to these pages and the entire x team of writers is in a flurry sharing scripts and feedback and ideas so what we have here is this is what there's more because the, as I said, but wait, there's more. These are just the first three. And then these little ones down here, <laughs> we're going to get to them too, allegedly. We'll see. Trust nothing until it's in your hands. B&B, &B, thank you very much. If you had to make a new team, what characters would you choose? Oh, just any team? For me, it's Jackson Hyde, Yara Floor. Yeah. Duke Thomas, Cass Kane, and Rocky Irvin. Hmm. Hmm. I would like to see more of Yara Floor. Can it be a villain team? It could be a... We can go villain squad. Oh, villain squad. Who would I put on a squad of villains? I want a punchline team. I want a punchline team, but with people who aren't the royal flesh king. <laughs> but I would like to see more punchline. Who am I going to put her with? Oh, I want tech people. I want to put her with some tech villains and I want her to be associated with maybe, maybe calculator. I want some mentorship and like alternate Joker mentorship. It's going to, it's cooking. Let me cook. <laughs> Let me think about it. Oh, green Archer comics. Thank you for the super sticker. MP. 
Thank you again. It's ironic that fans get so worked up over Wonder Woman snapping Max's neck, yet Infinite Crisis has no interest in exploring the moral issues involved. It's just a contrived plot device to break up the Trinity. Oh, uh, next snap. Next snap club. They haven't brought that up in a while. Who else here remembers when um, Maxwell Lord came back to like came back into it and then there was a daughter? There was a whole daughter run and then they just dropped that so hard. Just low key invested in Maxwell Lord's daughter a little bit, I have to say. I don't know. It was, it was kind of interesting. At least I thought so. Maybe I've just been in too many daughter characters. And so like, ooh, this one's slightly different. Psycho Jet Black, thank you very much. Could you please do a video on the Silver Age Iris West, Barry Allen's wife, where she's actually from the future and was brought back to life? That was a fun era, wasn't it? Oh, we can get into the trial and the neck snap and reverse flash shenanigans. It was interesting. They were struggling so hard to try and make Barry interesting for a little bit. The struggle was real. <laughs> Rain, why doesn't DC do something with Damien Asian side? I mean, like more with his family, like Talia and Rage. I think they do some things and they do things in other side material as well. The Wayne family adventures deals a lot with family stuff. It's still fun. It's still a fun web, dude. Peregrinus Falco, thank you very much. Have you any plans for a video about the darkness? Or are you still on the hunt for the comics? I'm not on the hunt anymore. The hunt has been successful. I would like to do the darkness, but I think that I want to approach it differently than how I approached Witchblade, which was where I tackled the first issue. And one of the critiques that I got that I think was valid was that some people wanted to see more of a first arc overview because they weren't as familiar with it because people don't talk about it as often. So I feel like if I'm to approach the darkness it might be good to do to add a bit more more meat than just the the first issue in wouldn't that be it'll be fun <laughs> jackie deserves it green archer comics thank you very much what do you think of the new birds of prey i love the first story and i'm excited to see barbara gordon back for the second i am i am middle of the road on the new birds of prey i know some people absolutely adore it i'm just not one of those people for me, it's for me, it's just okay. But I'm glad that so many people are really into it. And hopefully it keeps a birds of prey running for a while because I do enjoy the team in general. Hey Annie Mock, thank you very much. <laughs> Would love to see you cover Batman Universe. Bruce slash Hal. <laughs> you know I'm always here for the Bruce Hal dynamic that was them not liking each other, then being friends, then not liking each other. Oh, what a time. And a good time it was, too. Ozzy DeGroon has a question. Let me pull out. Actually, let me leave it here because it's an X question. Why keep creating X-Men books with new kids when we have all of Academy X doing nothing? <laughs> the cynical answer is so that creators can have IP to produce Another answer is maybe that they're just not sure what to do with some of those characters. And so it can be easier to maybe hop on a new one and hope that they take off and hit because it's a bit frustrating to have to go back and work with a character that doesn't feel like they're getting over. But all of those are just speculation. So we will have to see. We'll have to see where it goes. Rain has some clarification. When I said Asian side, I meant like Chinese Arab tradition because I know he's mixed. It depends what, well, I think when they're doing Damien most of the time in the comics, they're focusing on the like son of the bat angle. There's definitely stuff to be mined in other avenues and it would be interesting to differentiate him from some of the other Robins. But a lot of comics fall into the, the mini Bruce kind of relationship for Damien. So I do have some questions that people asked me and shared with me. One of them I actually wanted to, because they were interesting and I liked this one. It was from a Garrett the Viking, which was, have there been adaptations of comics you've enjoyed more than the original comic? And I just thought that was a fun question to also put out there to all of you. And I can say off the top of my head 
I can think of uh, The Boys and Invincible. It's funnily enough are both from Prime, but I would say that both of those, while not everything is an improvement, in general is an improvement over the source. The Boys is just so much more focused <laughs> than its comic counterpart and as a result manages to make a more coherent point and is less shock for shock's sake. And whereas Invincible deals a lot with some of the pacing and meandering you can get in Kirkman comics, even though I love them and I have the compendiums back there, but sometimes there's a lot of meandering. So <laughs> Alexander F., thank you very much. You've been picked to create a team of the most terminally boring Silver Age heroes with failing titles. Who do you choose? Okay, failing title. People have failed. There have been different failings. Uh, failing doesn't have to mean boring, and boring doesn't have to mean failing. You can be boring and succeed. Someone's gonna be like, "Yeah, like you." No, but I would go Barry Barry Allen. I would say, having read a lot of Silver Age uh, Flash, the stories are interesting. Barry's less interesting. Lots of people say that Hal is boring. I'm like, no, I don't think Hal. Hal is. It's just the the adventures of that time were all over the place. They just could not decide what they were doing for a little bit. He's driving a truck. He's selling toys. He's in space. He's on Earth. They just couldn't figure it out. Rain says, I want mixed representation for David. Balls Monkey asks, are you a fan of Usagi Yojimbo? If so, highly recommend the new space Usagi. I, I have not delved in. I have not delved in. I hear good things. Is Do you think I should? Is that something that I should dive? Is that another thing that I should add to my list? <laughs> my never-ending, growing list of things? <laughs> Too many. Too many things. It's a good problem to have. Charlie99 had a another classic question that... <laughs> Hold on, Ozzy Dragoon just said, call the Silver Age Boring Heroes the Vanilla Squad. But Charlie had a classic question I thought would also be fun to ask, which was, which do you prefer, a bad story with great art or a great story with bad art? And that's always interesting to ponder. I think for me, it would be a bad story with great art. I mean, obviously, I would rather have a good story with good art. <laughs> But if I had to choose, because there's that marriage between the writing and the art, but what will probably be what will probably be able to hold my attention is if the art is good, and I'll be able to. It depends. What kind of bad is it though? There are so many different ways to be bad. Is it boring? Is it littered with grammatical and editing mistakes? It depends. Like, what's wrong with it? <laughs> That's there are there are more questions that need to be answered in that scenario before, but in general, in general, all things being standard, I would probably say art art more good art, please. <laughs> what about all of you? Which would you rather have? Like you have no other choice. Nothing's good. You can't have good, good. <laughs> None of that good, good. Only, uh, only mid. <laughs> Someone asked here actually about the thoughts on the new X-Men announcements. I don't have strong feelings. I don't have strong feelings. So like we looked at it. Do any of you have very strong uh, feelings? Are there any of these that you are a hundred percent Picking up, that's your jam. You're sold based on these descriptions. This is what you want. I'm of the, we'll wait and see. We'll figure it out. We'll, we'll figure it out. I'm definitely going to be there to figure it out. I don't know if I'll talk about it, but I'll be there. <laughs> In the wings, reading it. Let's see. Harry Schlitz, thank you very much. Hi, lady. Can we get a review of DC Bronze Age Freedom Fighters and Sex Talk of Supervillains? Thank you. We'll see. You know we'll see. 
<laughs> also, I always love the covers that you send me. They're so great. They're so fun. And some of them have inspired some videos. So it's always appreciated. They're always a good, a good thing to open. Jay Parker, thank you very much. It's very appreciated. This is going to go towards building that Silver Age archive for us to continue to explore and enjoy <laughs> and retrospect upon. There's a bunch of notes that I've been collecting for some longer retrospectives that are going to be a good time because sometimes you need to do short nine minute Riddler videos. And sometimes you need to do long essays about Jimmy transforming into stuff. B and B ask any history with Toriyama's works, Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. I of course heard about his his passing, and that's that was sad. And there were some beautiful tributes out there that were really nice to see, and some really they did, some of them they tug at you and they hit you, you know, with the, all of that that history and the work. Yeah, I saw some really nice people like splicing together a bunch of of clips and just all the work and posting them on various social medias and. It was it was sweet to hear people talk about how much it had altered their life or got them into art. Psycho Jet Black, thank you very much. Who had the most good Golden Age stories and side characters? Batman, Superman, or one? Oh, those are my choices. <laughs> those are my choices. Hmm. Good. What? What? Um. I would argue that. Batman has the most consistency after he gets, after he figures himself out in the first few months, he has the most consistency. Although I really like some of the backups in Superman's book and Golden Age Wonder Woman is just a, a thing unto itself, <laughs> but it is a cohesive creation, <laughs> but it's, it's an experience. It is definitely an experience. I think there's a reason why they so consistently release Batman's outside of just that he sells. <laughs> it's also that they are having read them all together. I would argue that Batman's from a modern in quotes perspective are some of the more readable ones of the golden age material. <laughs> Terrest 504. Thank you very much. Have you addressed Watchmen and its adaptations? I have not because I feel like everybody and their mom has addressed the Watchmen. Not that I don't find it interesting or enjoy talking about, it, but I just feel like what more could I potentially add? If I ever came across a corner where I felt that this was something new or that people hadn't talked about, I'd, I'd dive in. But at the moment, I can't think of anything. <laughs> Dan Castelli, thank you very much. That Venom shirt is fire. Thank you. The, the Venom eyes. <laughs> it's going to go back in the closet for Lord knows how long after that. So, <laughs> so it's good to hear that it's being appreciated. <laughs> oh, Andrew says before Watchmen. I do have all before Watchmen. Do people not talk about before Watchmen? I have thoughts about before Watchmen. <laughs> Are they, I don't know if they're hot takes, but these days, really medium level takes can be hot takes. Like, I liked or didn't like it. Hot, burning, get away from the stove. <laughs> Stay away. I have another question here, which is, as a parent and nerd, <laughs> would you ever name a child after a comic character? Not if it was something that could get them made fun of. So... No, not if it was like a superhero name or something. Also, probably not. I mean, sometimes some of the name suggestions had names that happened to coincide, but that wasn't why. <laughs> it just so happened to be that way. I'm scrolling. Oh, some of you are talking about the before uh, Watchmen that you enjoyed. There are a couple that I really liked and a couple that I really did <laughs> It was a mixed bag. And then you got into the concept of whether or not they should be read at all. Because when you dive into the Alan Moore lexicon, it's a bit like diving into the Herbert verse or stuff where some things are considered absolute canon and other things are not. And it's passionate. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> Mm 
Let's see. The silence is me scrolling. <laughs> Some uh, streamers I know are very, very afraid of dead air, and I understand it, but sometimes you just need to take a moment and breathe and live in that in that silence. Uh, here's an interesting question. Which comic will you never cover and why? I think most of the time when I don't cover something, it's because I feel there isn't anything overly interesting to say about it. like there's no there's no hook or not something that I feel like would be interesting enough to fill the time or also something that's just going to be fundamentally unpleasant or something where the discussion is not going to be able to get across but I'm, tr I'm struggling to think about what that specifically would be because those are such small instances not the boring boring happens a lot but but the the latter maybe some of crumbs work that might be a bit hard to uh to discuss yuki Turumi, thank you very much do you remember dcau's one room next batman thing yeah i do of course i do <laughs> sadly never got explored beyond some elsewhere stuff as i recall thoughts oh the dcau wanted that to happen in the confines of the DCAU, I don't mind it, although I'm one of those people who would prefer it if Wonder Woman was with neither member of the Trinity, but that's just me. I, I like the idea of them not mingling in that way. Let's keep professional co-workers and friends. <laughs> so I'm not sold on Superman, Wonder Woman, or Batman, Wonder Woman, or Superman, Batman, whatever we're doing, I'm not sold. Although they can be fun to explore, I've read the fanfics, but in general, <laughs> no, that's just my opinion though. But it was fun for that universe because they built towards it completely in that way. And they have different histories in the DCAU versus the comics or other places. Common sense. Thank you very much. I think I already asked you this, but what golden age Wonder Woman villain would you elevate? I would pick Hypnota. The Lasso of Lies makes more sense with her. I like that. I like that. I really like, I like the Lasso of Lies idea and I like the idea of assigning it to one of her classic villains. That's very, very fun. She had so many rogues and they were cast aside. Justice for the glob. <laughs> I'm trying to think who I would want to elevate. I did a video on her, like a tone. And why is her name escaping me at the moment? That's so sad. I did a whole video on her, but I really liked Atomica, Atomia. There's a video. The name eludes me at the moment. <laughs> it's late. Don't judge me. <laughs> it's on there. I would also like to explore, again, some of the more outlandish adventures that she used to have, where she was dealing with larger than life, like mythological concepts those are always i enjoy that it sets her apart and like she has to protect man's world in a different way from different types of threats and it makes it feel like the trinity are all then their prongs on different types of threats to the world and i like that concept a lot Psycho Jet Black, thank you very much. Thoughts on Mr. Mixie, because I'm not going to try tonight, fusing the new 52 Superman with the post-crisis Superman during the storyline Superman Reborn. Did you like the comic? I have almost done a video on that comic. I know why they did it. And they kind of don't address the what that means for the idea of who Superman is. And then we're so many retcons in that we can kind of just ignore it. I thought it did its best for what it was trying to do, which was ultimately return a more classic style Superman. And I'm biased because that's the type of Superman I prefer. So ultimately I was happy with the outcome, but I can see how some who may have preferred the other wouldn't have, or how you could get hung up on. So does he actually know the people in this universe or is he just stepping into other Superman's life? Is this is this weirdness? Is this parallel, dim like parallel dimension, Twilight Zone shenanigans? So I can see how some would really be for it or not be for it. And it's also interesting how it's just something that really is not brought up. 
we don't want to. <laughs> no editor's notes for that. <laughs> Let's leave that in the past. NA55, thank you very much. What did you think about the Superbat fusion using the Lantern Ring? Are there any other silly GL ring-induced fusions you want to see? Brackets, Danny Catch. <laughs> Danny Catch retrospective? I enjoy when the Green Lantern Ring is just a menace to society. So early Silver Age Green Lantern Ring, where it could it was essentially god level powers unless something was was yellow, was entertaining. But I can understand why they dialed it back because otherwise whoever has the like they don't address how terrifyingly powerful green lanterns are a lot but it's a good thing i'm darting my eyes over there because the x-men page is doing weird stuff but it's a good thing that you know because if people go rogue you have a lot of power on that finger there's a lot of power in that ring matthew says mixia spit like it's a pens or spit a lick <laughs> It depends. You'll have people argue it. You know it. You'll have people argue it. But you know what makes it sound cute and fun? Saying mixy. <laughs> and then what flits through my mind is that Supergirl episode, the first one, where they were like, he'll be less creepy if we make him super hot. And then they abandoned it for a more accurate mixy later on. Although I think the most accurate Mr. Mix would have to be Superboy, which is something that I was lightly rewatching a little bit ago. That was... They went for it with the orange and the little hat. And I appreciated the level of dedication that they put into that. That was great. <laughs> there is some very fun Superboy episodes. And it feels like that series was so forgotten. I found a channel that was doing reviews and even had interviews. I was so excited. I was so hyped. There was an interview with the guy who played Dracula. And I was like, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> the the vampire of steel episodes let's do it <laughs> ozzy dragoon thank you very much any plans for x-men evolution content in the future probably i've been enjoying flitting in and out of the different adaptations but where i would probably go first would be wolverine and the x-men I think there were a lot of really interesting Wolverine and the X-Men moments. And that series really doesn't get discussed. For a while, when I was younger, I thought it was a fever dream. I would see, this is going to date me, I would see the cover in the video store and just be like, what is, what is that? Wolverine and the X-Men. <laughs> then I picked up, I was like, Wolverine and the X-Men. <laughs> it was interesting. It was interesting. And I, I feel that it was canceled too soon. And I would have seen more. <laughs> Yuki Turumi, thank you very much. Thoughts on Young Justice cancellation show? Oh, Young Justice and its hiatuses and gaps. Young Justice, because of its hiatuses, is almost separate shows. That happens sometimes. You have first season, which feels like its own thing, second season, which feels like its own thing, hiatus, new series, which also feels like its own thing. <laughs> so, it's it's interesting. The Far Escape vibes, only with more gaps in terms of things feeling just different. There were, on the whole, I felt like the first two seasons were more cohesive, whereas the latter ones had moments and arcs, but didn't come together as a cohesive whole the same way the first two had, in my opinion, at least. Oh, someone's asking here if I kept up with Tom King's Wonder Woman. I'm a couple of issues behind, but I am still reading it and the the Trinity special and all of those things. So I'm still I'm still on the train. I'm still on the train and I am still contemplating what I talked about two streams ago, the one before with Amanda of doing general catch up videos like Wonder Woman 6 months later or something like that just to catch it up and see what's going on because i think that's important too because lots of times first issues get talked about and not the latter ones or later ones and i'm guilty of that too and a lot of it is just time the time to be able to do it so i'm like i feel the best solution is to do roundups or catch-ups and just 
maybe not even necessarily make them full reviews of each every single issue, but just whether you're still enjoying it, if it's changed, if the art style's changed, if the storyline's changed, if you feel that it's gotten better or worse, those kind of things, you know, just to dip in and see what's going on because comics are such an ongoing, an ongoing train of a hobby to be involved in. And I don't think it's odd to hop in and out. There are some people who I know are on every single issue that they're reading every single month, but there are also people who, who chunk it a bit more or hop in and out. I'm definitely a hop in and out type of person. What about all of you? Are you in it every single month or does it depend on what it is? Is Are you like that with some of them, but not all of them? Or are you, are you hopping to the whims <laughs> around as I am? <laughs> And A55, thank you very much. I think Catch's drawback is less memorable to niche villains. Which was your favorite and who slash how would you revamp? I need to reread Danny Catch again because I had reread the 90s era of Ghost Rider because there are a decent amount of things they take from Danny and then will apply to Johnny. But I need to go back and check him out again because it's been a while since that reread. I think I reread Danny Catch's Ghost Rider when I was reading Vigilante. So it's been, oh my gosh, it's been at least a year since I was there. So that's definitely going to need a refresh for me at least. I read so many comics that sometimes some things just get pushed back and they need to be looked at to reawaken all of the, all of the kernels. Uh, someone asked, are you interested in X-Men 97? I mean, I'll, I'll see it when I see it. <laughs> I will, I'll see it when I see it. It's not a drop everything, watch first day kind of event for me, which is probably, it's terrible as a YouTuber. I really should be there and be like, the content. But I, that's, that's too much pressure. I'm just going to get to it when I get to it and ride the whim when I get there. Maybe it'll be close to the first week. Maybe it'll be a month later. We'll see. I'm sure if it's amazing, Amanda will message me and be like, oh my God, drop everything and do it right now. So we'll see. How about all of you? Are you are you excited for it? Are you have alerts on? You're going to be there. Like I have something on for is it is it cake season three? That's just because my kids really like it. <laughs> We gotta be there. Is it cake? The priorities. <laughs> oh, priorities. That's what the people want. Getting texts. No. Now is not the time. Now is not the time. Later. Later, 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 later. All right. B&B has a question about Kushahala Spirit Rider who sought out... What was their thing again? Now I'm trying to remember. I don't have strong feelings because I'm blanking. Wow. I think that answers the question right there, unfortunately. <laughs> Any 55 thank you very much. Danny is the Wally West of Ghost Rider. I love how passionate you are about Danny Katz. I really do. Third mantle holder, pioneered all the best iconography just to have it ripped off by the main guy. Second mantle. You know what? Yeah, there is a lot. Of, I think there are some decent similarities there. Oh, thinking about that makes me think about the Flash, the CW Flash, where it was basically going, let's do Barry Allen, but what if we took half of Wally's plots and motivations and gave them to Barry? Let's do that. And then poor Wally shows up later with half his plots gone. <laughs> oh, CW Flash. What a time. <laughs> what a time to be. Oh, my goodness. I have to see what people have said. <laughs> One of the questions I have here is what is best in life? What, to crush your enemies, to see them cower before you and to hear the lamentations of their woman? Is that what you're asking? <laughs> That's all I think of when I hear that. I probably didn't get that quote entirely correct. Psycho Jet Black, thank you very much. Who's the Marvel version of hot mess Hal Jordan? There can be only one. 
There can be only one. Okay, so to be hot mess Hal Jordan, you have to be a character who has a reputation as being the best, number one. Um, you're like, you gotta be a cocksure, womanizer, but at the same time in your personal life, you're a hot mess. But to be Hal, that has to not be acknowledged. That has to, we have to, that's not happening. Didn't happen, never was. And then you're Marvel Hal. So who, who would you say that that is? <laughs> Teres 504, thank you very much. Thoughts on something is killing the children. I'm all right with something is killing the children. It's it's not my fave. It's not my least fave. I remember when some people were really, really into it. I was never as into it as other people. I'm never into things enough <laughs> for people. Some people are saying Johnny Storm, Hank Pym, <laughs> Scott Lang. Do people think Scott Lang's the best, though? Would people say, like, Scott Lang, best Ant-Man? Because that's the thing about Hal Jordan. They're, like, the greatest Green Lantern of all time. The GOAT. That's Hal Jordan. Would people say the same thing? Tony Stark. You know, at first my mind flitted to Tony Stark in terms of who's Marvel. But I don't think so because Tony Stark's flaws are so much more acknowledged by the narrative. You see him struggle through a lot more and people will bring it up in a way that they don't with Hal. Even when he's asking Carol to like co-sign his, his lease and he has no apartment or anything. So, like, briefly Superman called him out for a bit but lots of times it's not even mentioned and then we've just gone full he's the best at what he does <laughs> and what he does is trip over things <laughs> Scott Summers someone said question mark hmm Scott might be but do people acknowledge that Scott can be maybe Scott Scott can be a disaster and lots of times it's just presented as but he's the leader who's got it together. So maybe, but it depends on what era, but I'm going to, I'm going to consider Scott. I'm going to give some strong consideration to Scott Summers. I was listening to a rap song the other day and all of a sudden the artist was like, Scott Summers. And it just, it threw me off so much and I loved it. So I listened to that song so many more times. <laughs> NA55, thank you very much. They did the same thing. They did the same thing. You, Danny, gave caretaker spikes, chains, and the stair to Johnny in the cage film. Yes. That scene where he rides the bike up the building. It's a great scene. That is like a catch scene. Danny is the current kick. It'll fit. <laughs> yeah, Ghost Rider. Who else has a soft spot for first Nicolas Cage Ghost Rider? I do. I really do. <laughs> Yuki Rumi has a classic question. Do you hate Cyclops? No. No, I do not hate Cyclops. I didn't bring it up in the Magneto video because it wasn't relevant. But 90 Cyclops was one of my inappropriate cartoon crushes. <laughs> I remember watching that show as a kid and being annoyed with Wolverine and being like, why won't you listen to Cyclops? at the screen because I was that kid. This Cyclops knows what he's doing. Why would you listen <laughs> Uh, follow the rule. <laughs> oh, man. In comics, too, I like Scott. He's interesting. Even when he's being a disaster character and just making atrocious choices, Scott is interesting. And I always appreciate that. I always do. Dragon Berry Mead, thank you very much. Sorry if this has been covered before. I'm new here. Will you ever cover the Cyber Six comic series? Ooh, that would be a fun one. Cyber Six, Powers. There are so many comics out there. And that's why I'm hoping to get to a place again where I can sneak in more of just general lives reviews like I'm planning to do with Low and the like, just to kind of be like, these other comics are out there and they're interesting and maybe you'll like them. I used to do more of those. If you've been around for a while, I used to do You've Been Sleeping On. It's when I talked about Fables, Astro City, Day Tripper. I want to get back into doing some of that because that was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And it was a fun way to showcase some different comics. I'm hoping that some people in enjoyed them and found a new comic to read because that's always the, the hope <laughs> for me. Benjamin Hall, thank you very much. CBS Flash stole from Wally as well. Tim McGee, anyone? Also, Peter Parker is more of a disaster than Tiffany Mateus era major disaster. 
Oh, Peter Parker. But Peter Parker's comics go on about how unlucky he is. And he laments about it constantly. Hal sometimes has existential crises, but it's not the same. No, I wouldn't say it's Peter. I wouldn't give it to Peter. <laughs> not Peter Parker. Are people still on the Ultimate Spider-Man Peter train? Are we enjoying? <laughs> Jared the Nerd, thank you very much. Love your Batman 05 slash Clayface vids. Something else fun to cover might be Ostrander 87 Suicide Squad run. Specifically, Ivy's growing plant powers and Dr. Ver Dr. Vertigo's sewer slide art. Very well done. I love Ostrander's Suicide Squad. And there's, what issue is it that has that amazing Waller cover, which just made me really interested in the character where it's Batman and it's Waller and she's just got her finger up and she's backing him into the wall. I just, cause she's the wall. The wall is her, <laughs> but that's a really great, that's a really great era. It's really fun. <laughs> Psycho Jet Black. Thank you very much. Did Silver as DC characters die during crisis and reborn as post-crisis or were their memories simply changed as they remember Barry's death? Post okay, so post crisis created an entirely new rolled in timeline, and then some people are going to be worked back in with different times, like different backstories or time frames. Some people are going to flit in and out. It's not actually going to be them, and then you're going to have infinite crisis, which is going to explode the multiverse back in, and you're going to be able to deal with multiversal worlds and histories and the like. But for a time, they were trying to have it be just one, and that's why you have things like Atlantean Power Girl or the Barry Allen Return to Life, but it wasn't actually Barry, which was a, that was a great arc, and that was the arc where Wally got fast because he was finally going to be able to, he finally got through the mental barrier of not wanting to be better than Wally in the mantle, I mean, better than Barry in the mantle. That was a good arc. That was a really good period for, for Wally. Love that era. Matthew, thank you very much. Reminds me, I saw some X-Men in Florida a while back. They were 90s as all get <laughs> 90s X-Men costumes are where it's at. They have some great costumes across eras, but of course I'm biased to, to those. <laughs> Someone asked me here, what was my favorite era of costumes? And those were the ones that flitted into my mind instantly. Ooh, Isaac Martinez, what is your favorite graphic novel of all time? Oh, that's hard. That's really hard. Is this like one of those, you're on an island and they only let you pick one for some reason. You can only carry one thing and it's this graphic novel. What graphic novel would I want to read over and over again? Because, oh, there's a couple. Can I cheat and be like, oh, I bought the Astro City Metro book. And so it's all the Astro Cities together. I'll carry it in my poor crushed arms to my island. I do like that one. Basic, but I also really like Watchmen. I really do. I just never, never talk about it because everybody else has. So why would I? Um, Fantastic Four, Full Circle. I wouldn't say of all time, but that's just a great graphic novel. There's so many out there. I guess I'll throw it back to you guys. and Maybe I'll see something on the side. Like, that's it. That's the one. <laughs> that's totally what it is. Some of you are saying what? Uh, Alex Ross's art is, is great. I was rereading Justice the other day, which was him and Doug uh, Braithwaite. But, like, a, there's a lot of the hallmarks in that i like justice more than i did when i first read it justice was interesting as a as a reread whenever i reread anything i'm like reread whenever i reread anything i'm like ooh, should this be a video <laughs> content <laughs> that's the dangers of being a, a like a uh, content creator so i feel like life content <laughs> Let me see. Ooh, Callum had a question. What are your thoughts on a possible ultimate DC universe? This is a rumor that's been floating around for a while, time of recording. And whenever I hear it, I just think, but why though? Because DC already has such a strong, established Elseworlds and alternate universe 
factory of other things out there that it just seems a bit unnecessary. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see if it if it happens and what happens with that. Ooh, this is a, this is a nerdy question right here. It's what is your least favorite format for collected editions? So my least favorite format is also my favorite format. <laughs> it's I love and hate it. I have a love hate relationship with Omnis. As you can see, they are the preferred form because they're back there and I have a lot of them. I love them because they give you so much, so much. You get so many issues. They're collected. They're all there for you. You don't need to worry if things are missing most of the time, if they're well curated and it's just there. But the hate part of the relationship comes in with now it's time to read it <laughs> and it's big and it's heavy and it's, it's cumbersome and it's just sometimes difficult to get where you want. I moved some of my books around, which means some of them ended up back in storage and some of them are on the shelves because I do have a lot of them. So they're not always all out at the same time. And one that made it back into the box was the single Green Lantern, Rage of the Red Lanterns volume. And my daughter came to me and she was like, I want Rage of the Red Lanterns. And I was like, oh no, I, I put it away. But don't worry, I have it inside of Green Lantern Omnibus volume two. And I pulled it out and I had to flip through all these pages and get it for her. And she had to sit there on the ground because she couldn't lift it and flip through. And I could just see that she was not enjoying it the same way as when she had it in the smaller trade format. So I went, I got it. I was like, I'll find it. I'll go find the box that it's in and I'll bring it out. It's too sad. <laughs> uh, I think she's getting into Green Lantern. I don't know if it's for anything or just the art. She loves the art in those. She just thought it was so cool, all the different color lanterns. She'll come and ask for that one. She'll come and ask for Emperor Joker a lot as well. That one has been, uh, it's been getting loved a bit too much. But, you know, it's always nice to see that there's a dog ear now. I'm like, <gasps> but also it's nice to see that it's being loved because that's what they're for. They're to be read and to be experienced and enjoyed. And if that the few dog ears here and there, it's all right. It's part of a comics life. <laughs> uh, it's comics life if it's actually being, you know, read and in, engaged with. It's the same way they ask me to open Kirk and the Gorn, they want to they wanna make them fight. <laughs> like, let them fight. I have a question here from Half Metal Alchemist. And this is just thoughts on our Lord and Savior, Condiment King. <laughs> Which just makes me laugh. Condiment King is a, is a good cheesy time. <laughs> well... I am going to address this. Uh, what's better, live action movies or animated movies? They're just different. They're just different. They're both great. It just depends what you're trying to accomplish. And sometimes one might be better suited to your goals than the other. <laughs> Isaac Martinez is asking, how is motherhood? It's good. Thank you for asking. <laughs> it's, it's still good. Oh, Jonathan Stewart. I didn't see anything. No, I didn't see anything on my end. Sorry about that. I'll scroll back up a moment. No, I don't. I don't see anything. When they show up, they get highlighted, but I don't, I don't see anything. It may be being wonky. Sorry about that. Let me scroll, scroll, scroll. Do the scroll song. Anim a lot of people are just saying animated. I love animation and it doesn't, it doesn't get the respect in the um, West, especially North America that it deserves. John Stewart. Real. <laughs> Matthew Foster. Thank you very much. Has any comic made you go? What? No. Why? <laughs> Uh, yes. Yes. The first one that comes to mind for me that just leaps in there is cry for justice, which I know is a bit of a basic answer. But just when I think about just reading something, it's like, why are we, 
why are we doing this? Uh, Rise of Arsenal is another one as well, just which was uh, following the events of that and just how it dealt with it. It was just, but why the... <laughs> Because it's specifically what, no, why. <laughs> so it has to be, I'm assuming that it's not like, wow, that's not positive. <laughs> that's the one I think of, at least. It just, oh, what were we doing? <laughs> DC Vampires is b, &B. I got a question down here asking if I was going to finish that. And the answer was, maybe. I saw a Halloween special on another YouTube channel, and it really inspired me because all the spots specials whenever and i loved the the format of it and it just it really inspired me to be like yeah maybe i should curate a collection of scary dc books and then that made me think about um dc versus vampires even though that's not scary <laughs> i'm just thinking about how you know maybe we should experience the ending together for we're the same you and i <laughs> K Booty, thank you very much. Roy Harper cradling the dead cat is a great cursed <laughs> Oh, he needs that China cat. <laughs> He's got to get that China cat. Oh, my gosh. Ooh, since we're here, who has some uh, cursed panels that they can think of to just throw out there that would be potentially fun? <laughs> Someone just said Spider-Man sins fast. <laughs> You know, you can say that, and the Norman Osborne panels just float into my mind. <laughs> oh, um, I thought of another what, no, why. Multiple, multiple man. The baby plot, where the baby goes back into his body. Oh, I was not okay. <laughs> I was devastated. That was not okay. That needed to not happen. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. Now I'm thinking about it. Now I'm that one hurt. That one hurt a lot. That was a contender as well for comics that uh, made you cry or tear up. That one's up there. I can feel it behind my eyes just <laughs> thinking about it. So I'm going to try and think of some other what no was. If I look at my show and what's back there oh what like what know why the um early teen titans arc where donna is seduced and it's the seduction where it's being implanted in her mind against her will by that god and they draw these close-up like sexy panels of her like tussling her hair <laughs> oh man uh benjamin hall is saying ben riley's first unalive <laughs> i will never get used to uh, unalive in the new speak. I get why people say it. I, I totally understand. Like I said, my last uh, stream got demonetized and I blurred out the word drug. It wasn't enough. I didn't do enough. <laughs> Cursed panel wrecks. Anything from Archie's Sonic Run pre-160. <laughs> Ooh. Yuki Jirumi has a question. What's your weirdest comic moment? That's something different. Uh, weirdest comic moment. Now, weird doesn't have to mean bad, in my opinion. Weird can just mean a, an odd experience. I would say reading the Incal for the first time was very much just a, a mind bending experience. It's like, whoa, what's happening? And then the things just kept happening. Was, that was, I would say that was probably my weirdest comic moment when I was, or the Meta Barons also was, uh, was a weird comic moment for me. So <laughs> what about for you? What are some of your weird comic moments? Are we defining weird in, in different ways? We may be. <laughs> Jimmy says, I hope you do more X-Men videos. It, it'd be fun. It's, uh, I'm trying to think of how to phrase this. It's, I love the passion behind the X-Men, but it's also a place where sometimes things get a bit out of hand sometimes. So that can make it a bit less appealing of a discussion on occasion. But on the whole, 
I enjoy chatting the X-Men and I especially enjoyed revisiting the the 90s series and checking out what what they pulled from because that's one of the things that makes that one fascinating is the way they cobble together so many of the different plots. Proteus would be fun. Proteus would the Proteus storyline and then going back and seeing the Proteus panels, Proteus messed me up. Just the concept of being unmade and remade. And when I was in uh, nerdy forums and stuff, some people would kind of like, well, what about the transporter in Star Trek? That kind of unmakes you and remakes you. I'm like, but that's different. This was a different type of unmaking. Not only was it without consent, but it was being twisted in some kind of horrible, almost cosmic nether realm. <laughs> but <laughs> Hamfire Hunter, I love the name, <laughs> says, outside Marvel and DC, which comics do you like the most? I enjoy reading um, horror comics a lot. I enjoy reading lots of horror comics. I like to go through the classic EC archives. I especially like that I do this on my own like a nerd. I like to read the issues and then watch lots of the adaptations that they made on, say, Creep Show and the like. That's a lot of fun. Sometimes I make little notes to myself about what I think worked and what I think didn't. I did a Halloween episode on one. And it didn't go like gangbusters, so I didn't do a whole series on them, but I still do it on my own for fun. I also try and just see what's scary out there. Whenever somebody says something's scary, I go and check it out and see if I feel afraid or not. I also love checking out sci-fi books as well, which is why I have low. Uh, Black science is not within my reach right now, but I really enjoy checking out genre fiction. Crime as well. It needs to be in the mood for, for crime. But there's so much else that's out there to check out. That's a lot of fun. Dex Baker asks, if you could make a D-list character A-list, who would it be? Do they get to retain what made them cool on the D-list? Oh, well, I guess. Is the question D-list? Where, where is he C? Is he B? What what is he? I think a noir style series with the question would be fun. You could also do it with the Golden Age Sandman. I would do different things with them though. I would go for a pulp era actually back in the time period for Sandman. I would do modern conspiracy stuff as inspired by DCAU and the like for question. Those could be fun. I think you could have, because the mystery format, you could really do a lot with it, in my opinion. <laughs> Trey Wallace says, I'm reading Amethyst from DC Comics. Do you know it? I do. New Amethyst or old Amethyst? Which Amethyst? <laughs> Which Amethyst are we doing? There's more than one. Psycho Jet Black says, Curse Panel Wreck. Any of the Heroes Reborn comics? <laughs> Classic Heroes Reborn. That's the thing with naming arcs the same thing. You have to be like, which? Which one? <laughs> I'm assuming you mean Classic Heroes Reborn. Ben Chan, thank you very much. Will you ever talk about Alpha Flight and all its incarnations and how it hits you as a Canadian? <laughs> I so rarely talk about being Canadian. Actually, I feel like I talk about it a decent amount. Maybe I don't. I don't know. Truth be told, I don't have the strongest connection to Alpha Flight. So I think handling it from that perspective wouldn't be that interesting. But it would be interesting to see the evolution of the team and the characters, especially someone like Puck, who went through some radical alterations in backstory. So that would just, even just Puck by himself would be an interesting, an interesting video to do. So... <laughs> See, Isaac says, you're Canadian. I, have I not talked about it in a while? I, don't, I feel like I talk about it too much. I feel like that there's a, 90, there's a shirt I saw that was 90s kids like nothing more than telling people they're 90s kids. And I feel like that's accurate. I do am a 90s kid and I felt the way about being Canadian. Like, am I talking about it too much? I don't know. <laughs> oh my gosh. Sorry, this made me laugh. Nobody alpha flight, more like beta flight, um, more like sigma flight. <laughs> oh gosh. John, thank you very much. 
Have you ever played Dungeons and Dragons or any other tabletop games? I haven't played Dungeons and Dragons. I do play uh, here. This Hero Clicks. Does Hero Clicks count? <laughs> I uh, I play I play that I play like a Munson's a card based game and the like. There's a Battlestar Galactica game that's tabletop that's really fun where you some of you are humans some of you are Cylons and you gotta take each other down before you get to the final jump. That's that's a lot of fun. I used to play board games more when I was younger and before kids. Now it's now it's pretty rare and the board games are things like because you have to get everybody together and that can be difficult so it's things like snakes and ladders monopoly the game of rage <laughs> monopoly destroyer of families or things like sorry or trouble <laughs> anybody else automatically able to pull up the trouble theme in their mind when they hear that it's fun getting into trouble <laughs> Steven Turner asks, how are you feeling about the upcoming X-Men era? I hate it's giving X-Men 97 nostalgia's play and Storm's Mohawk. Gonna miss Krakow. <laughs> are you barfing at Storm's Mohawk? I like the Mohawk. <laughs> I like the commitment that the Mohawk takes. It's just, I think I just appreciate the boldness of being able to wear a, uh, a Mohawk. The Krakowan era was not my uh, my favorite era, so I don't mind the moving out of it. I don't want to return to what was before though. I just like something something different and just to see where it where it goes. So with any era, I would say I'm curious. Curious and as always hopeful. For what is life without hope? <laughs> yeah, I've seen some discussions about like mohawk or no mohawk and in my mind I flash to that image of Fantastic Four with the suggestion of Sue's mohawk. Trey Wallace says, old amethyst, but you should talk about it. It's so good. That's another one of the things that I um I collected amethyst back when Comixology was its own site in the Halston days. And they would have those sales for no reason where everything would just be 99 cents. Sometimes I would go through alphabetically and just get things. Huh. What a time. <laughs> what a good time that was. I read so many things that way. 99 cents is a great entry point. <laughs> and if you were curious about something and you could pick it up for 99 cents and then read it that day and maybe come back for the rest. Oh, good times. The past. <laughs> Mikey J. Hill is asking, thoughts on the newly announced Satana book by the I'm Not Starfire lady, Mariko Tamaki? I mean, if I can't have her on Hal, I'll take her on Zatanna. <laughs> Zatanna is a name where I consistently say it both ways. And I feel so bad whenever I do a video because I'll always say both. I'll say Zatanna and Zatanna. And then there's always somebody's like, which is it? I'm like, I don't even realize that I'm saying it both ways. And then I have the psych moment flash in my head. I've heard it both ways. <laughs> I have heard it both ways. People are still talking about the Mohawk. There's passionate discussion about it. It's not in X-Men 97 though. They haven't fully committed because the, the sides are still there. I'm like, no nah, fam commits. <laughs> if I had a Mohawk, which I would never, I would commit. <laughs> mm. Solar Alpha and Omega might make a funeral review or a fun review. <laughs> they might. They might. It would be, in again, if we're going to get back into, and I know I always say this, and then things go how they go, but if we're going to get back into the, the different, more, not obscure, but just less discussed, it would be, it would be good. <laughs> I think uh, comics could use that in general, just the highlighting of the breadth of variety that's out there outside of when something gets adapted because then that sometimes makes it feel that the comics are just there to be source material for other things but there's so much wealth there just in the medium itself and that's another reason why i like low which i keep coming back to which isn't it's because it's sitting here so i'm thinking of it but it's because you can see in the way it's constructed that it's just embracing 
being a comic and living in that medium. And there are lots of books that do that. And it's really fun to look at those and just see the different ways that you can explore a story, the different art styles and the like. And you you don't always get to see that when you're explicitly looking at the big two. And so it can make comics feel smaller than they actually are when there's so much else out there. <laughs> Snow Glare says Mohawk wig when. That would look so awful. I once had, okay, I have a wig that I haven't worn because it's bad. And it's from after I did a members only video about wigs that I'll never wear. Um, and I got that one after and it, it joined the list of wigs I'll never wear. But it's one, it's like a pompadour. It's a pompadour and it, oh, oh, what a, what a disaster. Like imagine Jojo, but wrong. <laughs> John, thank you very much. Fave comments, aesthetic era. I'm partial to how comics and characters looked in the 80s, even though I got into them in 2000s. I do like the aesthetics of the, the early Bronze Age in the, the 70s. This, that transition out of the silver into the bronze. Uh, like, I bronze. <laughs> bronze. The, the lengthening of torsos and costumes and the flow. There's a Big focus on flow, but not to the extreme as, say, when you get to the 90s with something like Spawn, where things are just flying absolutely everywhere. That may be one of my least favorite eras, late 90s, early 2000s, the blocks, blockiness. It took a while for me to be able to come back and read those and get into them as, like, this is just the aesthetic is the time, but the, I can't, the chunk, <laughs> it's, it's not for me. Not that, you know, I have different strokes for different folks. Zix the Pest says, would you ever look at the Power Pack TV movie? Hmm. I don't know, but that made me want to look at the Justice League uh, TV movie pilot, even though so many other people have. But it's just, that's just a good time. <laughs> Let's see. Ooh, that's a good question. C. Rouse is asking who has the most practical superhero hairstyle. Probably one of the short cropped coiffed ones or anybody who keeps it contained in a way that it can't be grabbed. Anything that, you know, that's going to give you, going to get you caught, pulled is not great for combat. Professor X. <laughs> it's true. Shala the Prinny says, just imagine I'm not Zatanna with the same plot. <laughs> we already did it. We can't repeat. We can't rehash. It's got to be different. <laughs> Certainly not. Lo Logan, you can pull up by two sides. So <laughs> you've got two handles on there to yoink him up by. So definitely not. Anything with a ponytail too. That's just a handle. <laughs> Oh, uh, but that's why you've got to have other things to compensate, you know, powers or maybe just supposed to scream confidence. Like, I'm not even concerned. You're not going to get close enough to touch by below shoulder length hair. <laughs> it's going to be fine. Moon dragon. <laughs> I love the, the fierce moon dragon look. Moon dragon's costume is doing the most by doing the least. <laughs> Oh, what a look it is. Let me see if there are any other ones that I think would be interesting to pose to all of you. Ah, Psycho Jet Black is asking, thoughts on the 70s Doctor Strange movie? I raise you Dr. Mordred with uh, Jeffrey Combs, which was supposed to be a Doctor Strange movie. And it's great. I mean, not in the, like, not, like, good, good, but, it, like, fun. <laughs> it's fun. I enjoy it a lot. That was another thing that I was going to cover back when Doctor Strange was coming out. So that was years ago. And it didn't end up, uh, it didn't end up happening. But I will occasionally take a look at Dr. Mordred for fun. You can find it very easily. 
very few people are clamoring to uh, to claim it. This is a very interesting question that I've never heard before. You've heard of comfort characters, but who is your confront character? A character who makes you so mad, you just want to confront them. <laughs> oh, that's easy. Green Arrow. <laughs> Mine's Green Arrow. Who would you like to confront? I think that's, a, that's an interesting question. You just need to leap through the page and have words. I'm assuming it's words. If it's more than words, then no, because I'm losing. <laughs> if it's an archery contest, also no, because I'm losing that too. <laughs> Some people are saying it's cyclones. <laughs> I'm just seeing what some of you are saying. Guy Gardner, Ben Riley. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting. It's an interesting question. I, I like that. Although I, I'm glad because I could answer that. I don't know if I can answer who my comfort character is. That's that's very different. Like the, the character that just whenever you read them, you feel warm and fuzzy and just safe and secure. I'm trying to think if there's any character that I read where I feel that way all the time. Currently, I cannot think of, of any. <laughs> John asks, can you expand on the green arrow hate? It's not hate. It's not hate. Just like with Reed, it's not hate. Ollie is an interesting character and a fully fleshed out one. And he, is, he definitely evolved away from his roots of just a Batman knockoff. And they gave him his own stuff. And I appreciate the evolution of Ollie. I appreciate that Ollie has distinct beliefs and feelings. I don't appreciate how Ollie is presented in comics a lot of times as, well, you agree with Ollie, right? You, just, you have to listen to and agree with Ollie. That's the thing that bothers me. Not, not Ollie himself. It's more the presentation around him, which is usually the case. And it also doesn't utilize him to its full potential because oftentimes there are situations that you could make more nuanced commentary on with Ollie, but the story is so focused on being like, but he's right though, that you, you miss it. At least that's my opinion. Not all stories do that either. Not all of them do it. There have been some great and fun Ollie runs, but those were some of the first that I read and they forever, whenever I jump to Ollie, that's one of the things I think of. It's like when one of your first Guy Gardner issues is the one where he takes her to the porno theater. You can't help but think about that. <laughs> it, it enters your mind, you know? <laughs> but for example, like the new run right now is fun. That one's fun. If you like Ollie, I can say that that one, that one is fun. I, this is such a strange question that I like it. Oh, sleazy Ollie. Like, remember when Dinah just assumes that he slept with a teenage girl? Because I remember that. We're like with Mia and the, she's just like, did you sleep with her? And I'm like, why was that your first assumption? Oh my goodness. <laughs> but this is just a really interesting and specific question. If you could go to a ball in a gown, who would you go with? Green Arrow, Batman, Iron Man, or Wilson Fisk? <laughs> there are so many additional questions to that. Am I going with them as bat? Like, are they in their personas? In a gown, specifically. Not in a suit. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with Iron Man. <laughs> I'm going with Iron Man. <laughs> If I have to go, because I mean, like Iron Man already goes out and does stuff as Iron Man. I don't know what era of Iron Man it is. I'm just using Iron Man and my gown's going to match. So, <laughs> uh, Are they in the gown? No, I. if you had to go, no, if you could go to a ball in a gown, I'm assuming that means that you're in the gown. <laughs> I just, that's such a specific question. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yes, it was Guy Gardner with ice. And it, it is a reference to a movie. I still hate it. <laughs> oh, I got I always get this question, but I answer it every time because not everybody knows. 
Um, how did you get the scar on your eyebrow? I ran into a cupboard when I was a child. It is a real scar. That's another thing I get asked. Some people think I cut it in because I hear that's fashionable or I get told I'm trying to be gangster, but I'm hitting things again. But no, it's a, it's a scar. John asks again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Follow up question. What character were you introduced to under the worst possible circumstances? <laughs> like someone's first Wonder Woman story being Amazon's attack. Oh man. I gotta think. Like a terrible character introduction. Hmm. I mean, Green Arrow through Hard Traveling Heroes is up there, but in all fairness, that wasn't the introduction. I'd seen him other places. So that I don't feel like that would that would necessarily count. Um Okay. Oh, yeah, this is one. This is definitely one. Uh, Dr. Light Identity Crisis. That was because Identity Crisis is one of the first books that I picked up. I wasn't deep into the lore then. Um, Yeah, so Dr. Light Identity Crisis, I would say, would be like the worst character <laughs> introduction that I've had in <laughs> getting into. Uh, yeah, what about you? <laughs> Someone says mine was the clone saga. <laughs> I kind of like the clone saga. What does that say about me? <laughs> I don't know. I, I do. I like that this question is just uh, know where I left my keys. I'm just going to say pocket and assume that I'm right. It's in your pocket. <laughs> ah, this is just a um, ooh, Injustice Damien Wayne. What was my Damien Wayne introduction? No, my Damien Wayne was the Batman and Robin stuff, which was definitely when he was mellowing a bit. Although, I mean, he was still calling people tramps and stuff, but it was mellowing. <laughs> this is an interesting question. Why hasn't Renee Montoya's question gotten any love from the animation slash live action media? I like Renee Montoya's the question. I especially like the arc in 52, the transition of the mantle. That one's That one's really good and just sweet. I like Renee Montoya's the question. I like Renee Montoya's entire development arc that she is that she went on. There isn't enough Montoya. I agree. More Montoya. This question is just how are you? I appreciate. It. I'm good. A lot of you asked at the beginning how I am. I'm good. <laughs> Some of you asked how are the kids. They're good too. <laughs> I like this question as well. When will you stop being casual about comics and get serious? I know that's a bit of a tongue-in-cheek question, but I often laugh with my husband that despite the fact that my channel is called Casually Comics, I'm very rarely casual, and I often get lost in weird rabbit holes and quagmires. I think in my head that is casual. <laughs> Maybe that's what being casual is to me, which is terrifying. Ooh. This is a good question that I think all of you will enjoy. It's uh, from David Daniels, and they say, Hi, which comic story has left such a deep impression on you that it stuck with you over the years? One that, uh, one that comes immediately to mind for me, which is them, The Price of Life in Transformers number 70. I got it as part of a subscription, and to this day, find a highly thought-provoking story about the lengths we go to to save those we care about. So what do we think? A comic that left lingering impressions that just stuck with you. It's burned into your brain. <laughs> hmm. One of them, there are a bunch, so I'm just trying to sort through them. Uh, Shade miniseries. Shade miniseries from Starman. That I like things that ponder immortality and that one ponders grudges over time and vendettas and what it's like to have a vendetta against someone who is immortal and just generations of this family going after him and destroying themselves i just i really thought about it, it ended up being a really powerful meditation on the concept of forgive forgiveness and moving on so i would say that the shade miniseries is Definitely one of those. 
Astro City Lover's Quarrel. I know that's the not the one that everybody goes to, but I really liked Lover's Quarrel because it's one of those ones that deals with aging as a superhero, being a non-powered and just slightly enhanced hero who is aging and getting hurt. And what I really liked about it was that you handled it with two characters, one who is dealing with it and the other one who isn't and is trying to push themselves past their capacity. And they're at the same time in a tumultuous relationship together. And I really liked that one because I felt that it showcased both sides of that coin so well. And it, it wasn't judgmental about like, well, yeah, he just needs to stop. It really took the time to explore why he felt like he couldn't. And so I really like that one too. There's so many. There's a lot. There are a lot. Shaw Prinny. I like the clone saga. Credibility instantly dead. <laughs> Unsubscribed. <laughs> I know. Is that a hot take? Is that <laughs> it's boiling? It's boiling over. Oh, the shade. No, I'm talking about uh, like the flash shade. Uh, the uh, that one, <laughs> Richard, <laughs> the one named after the Charles Dickens character. I'm seeing what some of you are saying are some of your um your moments that have stuck with you. Kingdom Come has some powerful moments in it for sure. Ooh, I like that question too. That's interesting. Okay, here's a question for you. <laughs> What's a comic that you know is very well liked, but you yourself don't? Hmm. Now I'm need to go, gonna need to go through the the lexicon of well received comics that I don't. Oh no, I don't. It's right there. Uh, Grant Morrison new X Men run. I don't know if it's still considered well received, but when I was getting into comics, you could not say anything about that run. Then it was just you're a pleb who doesn't understand the brilliance. And I was just like, no, I, I understand it. There's just a lot about it that I think is questionable and I don't like. And no, blasphemy, yeeted from the floor. <laughs> so I would say that's one. That's one for sure. Although I do have, uh, I do have fond memories. <laughs> I have fond memories of, of reading it and discussing it with people. But on the whole, not, not my favorite. What about for some of you? Some of you are like, agree. <laughs> I feel less alone. <laughs> I feel less alone. I'm trying to say, because I'm trying, I'm just looking to see what people say that like is, is acclaimed or that is really popular. Yeah, I'm seeing some that you would expect. Like, yeah, the Killing Joke Watchmen, because like everybody's and their mom again is like these, these ones. And while I like them, I can totally understand why other people don't. Hush. It's interesting. It's I I love hearing what hot <laughs> hot takes. Tyler Preston, thank you very much. Thoughts on the Cassandra Kane slash Connor Kent romance. I have no strong feelings <laughs> one way or the other. I'm sorry. I feel like the Futurama planet neutral. Tell my wife I said hello. <laughs> Ooh, Psycho Jet Pirate. Psycho Jet. See, I said Psycho Pirate because I was thinking about Psycho Pirate on the, the brain. Rewriting reality. Will the Xenomorphs replace the brood in Marvel? I hope not. <laughs> Don't cross the streams, except when we're doing crossovers, then we can cross the streams. <laughs> I'm seeing what other people are saying that they, they're popular. What's like, what's loved? The Dark Knight Returns. Yeah. Okay, I have another one. Um, This is, I think, I think this one actually is a hot take. Uh, year one. Batman year one. 
is a comic that I appreciate its place in history. I can see a lot of the things that changed and inspired. There are moments, especially with the art, that I very much enjoy. Overall, though, no, no thank you. <laughs> no, no thank you. But I have it because it's significant. So <laughs> I know, blasphemy, canceled. <laughs> it's all over. Get the torches and the pitchforks. It feels good. Don't you feel free? <laughs> unsubscribed i know right <laughs> Ooh, people are getting bold i see a i don't care about sandman and never have that's right get off your chest <laughs> oh ben chan asks Ca oh cast nick cage in guns dcu who would he play nicholas cage <laughs> I would like Nicolas Cage to play a villain. I'm not sure which one, but I think it would be fun. We've already played with lots of the cameos where he's gotten to be Superman. He got to voice Superman in Teen Titans Go to the Movies. He uh, got to do the PS2 graphics. <laughs> they weren't that bad, but the, the cameo, you saw it in The Flash. So let's do, let's do villain. Let's get some villainous Cage. random civilian number 67 you see him in the audience like wow was that nicholas cage <laughs> i need another head for one of my <laughs> nicholas cage shirts that i have oh i like some of these suggestions a lot i i'm really feeling toy man i'm really feeling toy man as a as a suggestion eraser Oh, give give the world the eraser. I mean, James Gunn loves to pull obscure people. So let's go. The eraser. It's the eraser's time. I legitimately think you could do fun things with the eraser and his whole cleanup business for villains. You could. There's something there. And I want the pencil costume referenced in some way. He doesn't have to wear it. That is a good question of which toy man. I think just amalgamating the concept would work, but I want pencils. I want stripes on the shirt. I want pencils everywhere in stand-up cups on the desk. <laughs> just, I want him to have a thing where he chews on erasers so you can get really, really silly and have a rumor be, be that he chews on the erasers and that's why he's called that. I'm getting way too invested in <laughs> uh, getting really invested in eraser eraser adaptation. <laughs> oh, Ben Chan, I love it. I love it. He'd have to say get the let out. Yes. <laughs> we need puns, but I want credible puns. We don't need to go so far that we're in Batman and Robin ice to meet you territory, but Throw them in and they make you groan lightly, but not want to turn the movie off. <laughs> oh, it's he erases you. You see, we're getting into it. We're getting into the groove. We're making it happen. <laughs> no, he can't leave a calling card because everything's got to be clean. It's got to be erased. <laughs> so... <laughs> Cage as Killer Moth. I saw a lot of people who just want to see some Killer Moth. If they do another Batgirl thing, I want to see her fight Killer Moth. I need that. I need that in my life. Huh. Rubbed out. That's another good one. I was going to say the whole sentence, but then that also has other connotations. But we can make it work. We can make you rubbed you out work. That's just, you're going to have to say it really menacingly. <laughs> you're going to have to say it with conviction and not even, not even blinking pretending you don't even know it could mean anything else and then it then it works <laughs> what are we talking about at this at this point we're just thinking of puns for the eraser he doesn't draw things out <laughs> Ooh, nick cage is the ten-eyed man how would you do a ten-eyed man how like are we going we can't actually put him on there. Not unless we're doing some 
really hmm hear me out what if they're not eyes per se for where he's going he does not need eyes no he does but what if they were kind of microchips let's go with more like their their sensors and they give him input so it's a bit like Jordy, but on his hands and he sees things but not the way that you or i see things and that way you could still deal with the fact that they're on his hands and maybe he could have different levels of vision he could see different things than you or i i like it i like it a lot <laughs> MP, thank you very much. Big two comics seem to be really proficient proficient at deconstructing characters, but I feel they often fail on reconstructing them and building them back up. I would agree with that. I enjoy a good deconstruction or even just a hard story where the character is really tested, but in order for it to feel complete or hopeful or remain inside of a heroic paradigm at some point you would hope to see them brought back up and reconstructed because at the end of the day i believe a lot of them are meant to be aspirational and i think that is part of what's helped them endure for so long how does he go to the bath why is that always the question it always comes back to like what <laughs> It's like, what's in the pants? How do they go to the bathroom? I just love how the logistics end up there. Ooh, Nick Cage's brother blood. We have got some very good. Ooh, Basil Carlo. We have got some really good Nick Cage suggestions. <laughs> we should send the sheet that they can never use because they came from us. It's one of those emails that they just throw out because they don't want to get sued, you know? Nick Case is Johnny Blaze. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, it's a good time. Oh, Hugo Strange. My favorite Strange um, was actually Gotham. Someone asked what my favorite Riddler was, actually, because I just did the Riddler video and I had a hard time. Part it wasn't actually which was my favorite Riddler, it was what was my favorite interpretation of the Riddler, which actually led me towards Paul Dini's reformed Riddler arc, which I really enjoyed also because it played upon some of his earlier stories where he pretended to be good just to mess with Batman. So I always thought that was a good dynamic of now he's actually reformed, but Batman would always have that in the back of his head of just, okay, how long, when is it going to, <laughs> okay, but, but when does he stop pretending? So that was, that was fun. I like that. And I thought about Corey, um, Michael Smith, was it from Gotham as well? That was Gotham had some good moments. Okay. <laughs> it was all over the place, but there were some good moments. <laughs> I know, right? Pink Riddler. I also learned some interesting behind the scenes stuff about one of the colorists that I did not know and did not come across while I was doing that video. So I, I appreciated that. I learned something new today. It's cool. It's very, very cool. Psycho Jet Black, thank you very much. Seriously, Poison Ivy and Mr. Freeze could be formidable JLA and wider DC villains and not just relegated to Batman. The Poison Ivy series that's ongoing time of recording is playing a decent amount with how the different aspects of Poison Ivy. And that's been nice to see because it's been a while since that's happened. So if you like Ivy, I would say that that's a very good series to check out. It's just quietly trucking along, doing its own thing, but it's there. It's out there. And and as for me, I really enjoy also the body horror aspects of it with the, the plants and the mutations. And, oh, just what happened with her and the Floronic Man? I think it's really interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Steven Turner, thank you very much. Excited we're getting a new Jean Grey solo. Do you have any favorite Jean comics slash eras? Loved her in New X-Men when she was kind of a bully. And I wish they would bring her back her psionic form. So I'm just thinking about some of her um her bullying. <laughs> I because I remember it. It instantly came into my mind. Jean is not one of my favorite characters, personally. I always enjoy the plots that are happening around her more than the character itself. Like lots of the fallout from things that have happened with her. So I enjoy her in that capacity. I think more than Jean herself. Like I, I love all of the, the Madeline Pryor and the cable and the clones and every, like I enjoy that aspect, I think more than Jean, if that makes any sense. Does anybody else have a character like that where there are always interesting things happening around them? Well, I guess, you know, Silver Age Barry Allen. <laughs> have I seen Dune Part 2? No, because I haven't been able to find a babysitter yet. But that's okay because I'm rereading the book again. <laughs> Every few years I reread it anyway. Ooh, what's everybody's favorite Dune book? Mine's God Emperor. <laughs> if if you've read Dune. <laughs> Here I am just like, did you read all of Dune? <laughs> Hand of Omega, thank you very much. Please review Supergirl Cosmic Adventures in the eighth grade. I think you'll love it. You, you want me to expand the Supergirl playlist. I'll think about it. <laughs> But I think that will need a different voice than the Marilyn Monroe takeoff one I normally do. Clean Harry, thank you very much. It's appreciated. Oh, a couple of people are saying Chapter House Dune. I don't see that as an answer very often. That's cool. <laughs> that is very, very cool. So if you like Chapter House, for those who like Chapter House, do you agree with the idea that that is where it was meant to end? That like on Arrakis, you chop it off with the knife and that is where it ends for it is ended? Or are you one of those like know the notes and then his son continued them on and that was where it was meant to end? I'm just curious because I'm very much of the you chop it off and it ends where it ends. And that's also just very much like life. <laughs> John, thank you very much. Have you ever thought about doing a video about the Doom Patrol? I'm always been interested in that comic. Yes. And the answer to that question is yes. <laughs> Nick Cage is late out too. <laughs> you just want to see him as a giant worm. That's what you want. I want to see the worm. I want to see a navigator. I want to see the exotal tanks. The, give me all the weirdness. Just put it. <laughs> oh. Nick Cage is Harley Quinn. <laughs> you need to know. Come on. <laughs> we had some solid castings. Did you do a video on Egg Foo? Probably. You know, when I was doing all the Wonder Tot and Wonder Girl stuff, Egg Foo came up because the first story before he writes them out is an Egg Foo story. <laughs> oh, man. Hot take. God Emperor is overrated. Uh, I mean, obviously, I disagree because it's my favorite one. <laughs> Steven Turner says, you excited to see Gaga's take on Harley Quinn? I'm curious. I'm curious and intrigued. So I'm, I'll am i be there, of course. I'm always interested to see how stuff like that turns out. Oh, my goodness. It's midnight. <laughs> it's a new day. Wow. Uh, thank you so much for coming and hanging out and just chit-chatting about random stuff. Thanks to all the people who came um and left questions and i appreciate it i got to some of them i really appreciate you leaving them and yeah this was a lot of fun i had a lot of fun with just chit chatting it's always a good time just hanging out and chatting about whatever all of you make it a good time so i get good night or i guess good morning 
<laughs> and enjoy the rest of your day, night, evening, whatever it is uh, for you. So, and I'll be back with more videos soon. Next week, I'll be streaming um, with Amanda on her channel. We're going to talk about some X-Men stuff. So that's going to be a good time. And I'll see you when I see you. And yeah, see you again soon. Thanks so much for hanging out. Bye.